Okay, so what I'm going to speak about today is the rise of the far right in Ireland um, and really a little bit about who they are and a little bit about their strong movement really, especially since the onset of COVID. So those on the far right believe, can you, where am I now? Sorry. Spacebar. So those on the far right believe there is something fundamentally wrong with the way the world is organized. Um, this belief forms an essential worldview in the context of late capitalism, ecological and environmental collapse, COVID, structural inequalities and increasing experiences of overlapping crises. So the crises are used, and we've seen this with COVID, are used to drum up hate and apportion blame. And that is the key, that many people don't accept the reality um, and the real thing, the real, what they really want to get at is whose fault is this? Who can we blame? So added to this worldview, there's a crisis also of masculinity and variations of experiences of subjective failure. So that again is there's a huge movement of misogyny, which is really a hatred of women, but also um, uh, a crisis with some men in terms of their masculinity and in terms of their roles changing and how, that they, can, how they can cope with this role change. So a question of an identity crisis, really. So simultaneous assertions of hopelessness and power, because of course we can view the world as being quite hopeless sometimes, um, particularly in, with recent events. And then becoming a man as a project intersec intersects with uh, red pilling. Now, I'm not sure if you're not, if you're familiar with that world, word, I think it comes from the Matrix movie where you take the red pill or you take the, you take the truth pill or the, you're nodding your head, can you explain what it is? But it is, it's, it's, about, it's about a pill that you can take and you either... It's either, it's either like you continue to believe the illusion or you take the pill to see the truth. Yes, okay. Do you want to say that louder? You continue to... Continue to believe the illusion or you take the other pill to see the truth and invert it. Yes, that's that's very well explained. So it's a, a it's a priming dynamic recruited to recruiting to worldview. It's a process involving a cause or someone to have their perspective dramatically transformed, especially by introducing them to a new and typically disturbing understanding of the true nature of a particular situation. Okay, so you can have perhaps a lot of young um, people. Um, not, not so young people perhaps, that are very disenfranchised and very marginalized, and they become sucked in um, to this alternative worldview, which is, of course, a view of blaming, um, blaming migrants generally uh, for, for the problems of the world. Um, Self-actualization um, involves the joining of mythic community, example, the real Irish there, um, Feelings are mobilized either on or offline, and of course, because we have a lot of online hate now and the online platforms, it's very, very easy for a lot of these movements to, to flourish, um, and turns into fascist narratives of the migrant as the problem, uh, Muslim as the terrorist, the aggressor, the rapist, and of course, taking over, Islam taking over. So in addition to that, misogyny, which is um, the hatred of women, anti-feminism, racism, anti-migrant, and of course, Islamophobia. And of course, we, we hear about conspiracy theories all of the time. So these conspiracy theories are really directed at civil society groups like ourselves, like Twilight, like NGOs, like any civil society organization that stands up and tries to at least question the narrative, um, the negative narrative, na narrative that exists with uh, right-wing groups, and hate campaigns, and of course that's all facilitated by social media platforms, and it certainly has heightened since COVID. So there you go, you have, a, um, you have our own must come first, so there is a, a campaign of course in Ireland, and thankfully it's, it's a marginalised campaign I would say, um, in terms you have to house the Irish first, but of course the question there, who are the, who are the Irish? And that, that's, you know, that's what I usually would say to people, well, who are you talking about really? What do you mean? Is it someone who was born here? Is it someone that has an Irish name? And I've seen, the, I've seen it actually since the Ukrainian war, um, since the Russian invasion, I've seen already uh, Facebook's posts that 
have already started. But what about what about the Irish homeless? You know, really completely missing the point there. So. Um, you have also male protector stereotype myth, um, all pointing towards white nationalism and fascism, which is the look after our own. So, and that again, you know, I can, if anybody wants a discussion about that afterwards, it, it seems, you know, fairly plausible, but why, why don't we look after our own? Why don't we look after? Everybody needs to be housed. You know, the housing situation is that there's a shortage of houses. It's not the migrant that is the issue here. So again, you have, um, again, that, uh, you know, racism, like we, we don't need to look at racism, but of course, what we need to do is to accept and acknowledge that racism is, is prevalent in our society, very prevalent in our society. Um, certainly, as I said before, and Helena will concur with me, is that uh, traveler racism, of course, is, um, is an acceptable form of racism. We also have there, um, you know, with the, with the, uh, Asylum seekers coming into Ireland and seeking protection and the direct provision, and I, of course I was involved in the, um, the direct provision campaigns to end direct provision. Um, so we had that, uh, of course it was quite shameful in my view, um, towns coming out and saying no to direct provision, but of course changing the narrative. Um, so Uchterard says no to inhumane direct provision centers. Um, so the narrative was, oh yeah, no, we want people to come here, but we want them in, in nice, plush direct provision centers. Um, of course, and that does change the narrative and it, it changes everything really. Um, I'm going to move on here just um, in terms of the manifestation of right-wing groups um, and social media platforms. And this is a, you know, we had um, of course an outcry um, that we had a, a young teacher who was brutally murdered in Tullamore uh, a few months ago and right-wing groups very quickly um, jumped on to the bandwagon there. Um, and then I'm going to read you some of the posts, and then I'm going to just look at the posts a little bit um, in, in more detail, if you like. So uh, just for those of you who may not understand, this, uh, this Ashleen was out for a run, and she was attacked and murdered. And very, very quickly, it, news got out that it was a migrant. Um, it was not an Irish person who murdered her. Um, and of course, very, very quickly then, um, it was of course anti-migrant, anti anti-immigrant, all of that. So it says here, and this was a post on Twitter, why don't you get to the factual heart of the issue and address the real problem? It was a man from Eastern Europe who is currently being charged with the murder, which is untrue. There are thousands of people in Ireland, Britain, and Europe who would still be alive today if useless, unskilled immigrants, immigrants from Africa, Asia, and Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe hadn't been allowed to migrate. migrate. So again, blaming, um, blaming NGOs, blaming government, blaming everyone for letting those people in. So over 30,000 young, white, indigenous female ch children have been gang raped, trafficked and tortured over the last 40 years in England by Pakistani Muslims who have been allowed to come to England to live and work as taxi drivers and kebab shop owners. Will you be in Telford, uh, West Midlands on March 29 to, to watch the first in a series of documentaries that promises to expose the real reasons that racist Pakistani Muslims were allowed to get away with the worst ever crimes in peacetime? in pre-time Britain for so long. Thousands of people will be there, mostly men, and I believe you can actually watch it online. And then you rancorous people, which was the anti-racism group in Ireland, you rancorous people are all paid by the same small group of societies and foundations to continue and support your toxic agenda, which is the inclusion agenda. Um, you probably don't give a damn about anything else, okay? So again, using examples from the UK here, um, and it's amazing how, you know, I, I talked about red Pilling, you know, bringing people in, so giving young people this information, and of course, people, young people um, who can be very, I suppose, you know, influenced by a certain order, um, believing that, of course, it is the, it is the civil society groups that are are to blame for all of these problems. So one man, as opposed to a woman, is doing what the police should have been doing for 40 years, but couldn't because the entire political and judiciary and social services in the UK were compliant in these heinous gang rapes. 
The reason they didn't act as they should have was nothing to do with the fear of authorities being labelled racist. The first, the real reasons were, were much more sinister, but I'm guessing you know this. So uh, migrants being allowed to come to England to live and work as taxi drivers and kebab shop owners. I've said that before, again, looking at one, um, one incident in which is completely um, untrue what happened here. But of course, it was put out on the media, social media platforms and believed. So again, if you look at this, and it's just a little bit of analysis here, what you have in all of that, and again, the fascist movement here, you have racism, Islamophobia, and of course, you have um, so, uh, conspiracy theories, theories. And of course, a lot of people do believe conspiracy theories um, because of our lack, I suppose, of uh, critical thinking, which is really, really important in, in schools. Um, again, moving on to you know, the underlying messages here, men as protectors of women and then a reference to an event in Telford, the UK. So it's all fairly plausible if you believed everything that you read on Facebook or on social media. So it is really, really important. And I know this is very hard hitting, but the issue is that fascist movements in Ireland, fascist political parties are on the move. Um, and it's really, first of all, if we don't acknowledge that, if we don't acknowledge that, we can't dismantle it. And that's a, re a real message that you, we need to go home with today. So again, um, there is this, uh, uh, the Irish putting, you know, Ireland first, Herman Kelly. Um, and I, I'm not sure, can you read that there? No. And I can't read it here because it's so small. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm betwixt and between, I'm afraid. Okay, anyway, um, Herman Kelly, who is uh, from the Irish National Party, he believes, uh, he put out on Twitter at the time of Ashley Murphy that you can bet um, it, it's going to be a migrant who is going to be to blame for this, uh, for this murder. And he was saying, um, you know, there, there's a killer on the loose in Ireland and I'd still, I'd still bet he's foreign. OK, so again, putting out that message there to, to society in general, who are, of course, many people after coming out of COVID or maybe still in COVID, which we are, um, are still in fear. So, you know, fear is a, it's a, it's a, I suppose, a, a planting ground for hate. And a lot of people who, who live in fear very, very quickly default uh, in terms of hate and blame. So that's Herman there, um, the Irish Freedom Party, vote number one. Uh, there again, and I'm, I suppose I, I'm naming it here, um, in terms of who, who the Irish fascist parties are. Um, they are in our communities. They are knocking at doors. Um, they are, you know, talking about very plausible, you know, we need, we need more housing. If we didn't have those migrants, all of that. Um, really quite appalling in my view. So hate speech, and I'm nearly at the end of it here, incidents have been reported uh, on nearly every continent. So it's not just Europe here. We know there's a very, there's a, there's a very vibrant fascist movement in Europe. Um, much of the world now communicates on social media, with nearly a third of the world, world's population active on Facebook alone. As more and more people have moved online, experts say individuals inclined towards racism, misogyny, or homophobia have found niches that can reinforce their views and go them to violence, and we've seen that as well. So social media platforms also offer actors the opportunity, violent actors, the opportunity to publicize their acts, okay? So if you are young, and I, when I say young, statistics would suggest that it's a lot of young males that are becoming involved in right-wing fascist movements. So in summary, we all need to be vigilant and mindful of far-right far right sentiment. Groups like Twilight need to challenge the narrative of right-wing views and microaggressions. Now, when I say microaggressions, that's really where hate starts. So people might say something quite innocuous or something like, oh, here they are again, or you know, um, make some kind of comment about the color of people's skin or perhaps linking in, in a sentence linking, um, you know, a migrant with perhaps uh, some offence, and it, it can very easily go down that road. 
Um, so political parties, and again, I'm naming it here, uh, the National Party, the Irish Freedom Party, Renewa, and far-right influencers have to be challenged. Okay, that they really have to be challenged. And I think anyone that starts to have that argument with you, it has to be challenged. If we if we don't acknowledge it, we can't dismantle it. And I'm just moving on to the last one here, and that is on Monday is Anti-Racism Day. Um, uh, March is Anti-Racism Month. So I'm hoping that some of us can get together and perhaps take some uh, photos and uh, we can we can send, we can tweet out this to the Irish National Anti-Racism Platform and it can go up on social media. So I just want to thank you. I know it's been hard hitting for a lot of people, but uh, this is my area of research and this is, um, I talk to a lot of people uh, I work with a lot of migrants, um, and I, this is what I hear all of the time. And I also hear young Irish people uh, with a kind of an anti-migrant rhetoric. So the, the groups like Twilight, um, any anti-racism group, any group that promotes integration, any NGO, I see Oxford Youth here, um, the guards, everyone, we all have a part to play in challenging the narrative. And, and that's what's really important. So thank you very much for your attention.